it's scary. This video contains more advanced concepts and technical terminology and is suitable for viewers aged 13 plus. Today I'm talking about the dinosaurs and how they mate. I think I've even worked out how Stegosaurus mates as well. Diplodocus. This genus of dinosaurs lived in what is now Midwestern North America at the end of the Jurassic period. When Diplodocus wanted to mate, it was done in a standard dinosaur style. The male would come alongside the female and throw its leg over the female's back as she lifted her rump into the air to move her tail out of the way. Diplodocus lived at the same time as the two predators Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus. Its great size was certainly a deterrent. Diplodocus had highly unusual teeth compared to other sauropods. The crowns are long and slender and elliptical in cross section while the apex forms a blunt triangular point. Subscribe and like if you like this video. Spinosaurus possessed a long narrow skull resembling that of a crocodile and nostrils near the eyes instead of the end of the snout. Dinosaurs shared a common ancestor with alligators and crocodiles more than 250 million years ago and modern birds are the living descendants of dinosaurs. We can therefore surmise that anatomical structures present in both birds and crocodilians were present in dinosaurs too. The reproductive organs of both groups are generally similar. Males and females have a single opening called the cloaca. This is a dual use organ for sex and excretion. Male birds and crocodilians have a penis that emerges from the cloaca to deliver sperm. Argentinosaurus is a genus of giant sauropod dinosaur that lived during the late Cretaceous period in what is now Argentina. It was a member of Titanosauria, the dominant group of sauropods during the Cretaceous. Carnotaurus lived in South America during the late Cretaceous period. It had thick horns above the eyes, a feature unseen in all other carnivorous dinosaurs and a very deep skull sitting on a muscular neck. It also had small vestigial forelimbs and long slender hind limbs. Scientists are now able to tell the difference between male and female dinosaurs. Just prior to laying eggs, female dinosaurs like female birds, draw on their own bones for calcium to build eggshells. The source was a temporary type of tissue called medullary bone, lining the inside of their leg bone cavities. When this tissue is found in a leg bone, you know you've got a female dinosaur. Tyrannosaurus made its name by terrorizing Earth at the end of the late Cretaceous. But Tyrannosaurus rex may have had a sensitive side too. Experts believe that males and females rub their sensitive faces together in a prehistoric form of foreplay. Most dinosaurs use the same basic position to mate. The male would mount from the rear. He put his forelimbs on her shoulders, lifting one hind limb across her back and twisting his tail under hers. 
the male would be at an angle to the female. Land dinosaurs may have also used water to help support their weight when mating. Stegosaurus. It had a stiff spiky tail which could have caused some problems. The females could not raise their tails because the bones at the top end were fused. The most likely way would be for the female to lay down on her side and the male reared up to rest his torso over her. Most dinosaur species would have developed extremely long sex organs. These may have grown several feet long so they could reach around any dangerous spikes, a tactic still seen in animals such as armadillos. Tap the bell icon to be notified when my next new video is released. Thank you for watching my video. See you again soon. See you guys in my next video.